Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking this up from the topic of sets and relations. And if I talk about the question which is given to us here from this topic, the question tells us to find out how many number of elements are in the set where n belongs to z, which indicates that n belongs to integers and the other expression given to us is mod of n square minus 10 n plus 19 less than 6. So we need to figure out how many number of elements are there in the set. And if I talk about the answer choices that we have here, it is 5, 6, 7 and 8. So we need to figure out how many number of elements are there in the set. And if I talk about how to solve this question first, let's analyze that expression. So mod of n square minus 10 n plus 19 is given to us as less than six. So if I remove the mod, I know I can have n square minus 10 n plus 19 less than six and greater than minus six. Now, once I have this inequality with me, I can just split it into two parts. One part, it gives me n square minus 10 n plus 19 greater than minus 6. And the other part gives me n square minus 10 n plus 19 less than 6. So from here, I can take 6 on the other side, which was minus 6. And this way, it gives me 13 less than 0. And from here, I get n square minus 10 n plus 19 plus 6, which is 25 greater than 0. Now, once I have both of these quadratic expressions with me, I know I can write this as in the form of a square minus 2ab plus b square. So I can write that as n square minus 2 times 5 times n plus 5 square greater than 0. And this, if I want to solve this, we cannot factorize this expression. If you try to split the middle term, you won't be able to do it. So we'll apply the formula method and find the values of n that I can have here so that this expression becomes less than z. So first of all, let's solve for this first part. You get that as n minus 5 the whole square greater than 0. Now when I get this expression, n minus 5 the whole square is greater than 0. So that tells me that square of anything is greater than 0 unless this n minus 5 turns equal to 0. So n cannot be equal to 5. So I understand from the first expression that it says n belongs to all the integers except 5. Because if you put n as 5, then only it will become equal to 0. If you put any other integer, if it is positive, the square of that is still positive. That's greater than 0. And even if the difference is negative, the square of that is still going to become positive. That is also greater than 0. So I understand for this expression that n can belong to all the integers except 5. Let's solve for this expression. Now we have been told that the value of this entire quadratic function, so n square minus 10 n plus 13 should be less than 0. First, let's put it equal to 0 and solve this expression. So if I solve it using formula method, n becomes minus b, so minus of minus 10 plus minus root of b square minus 4, a in this case is 1, c is 13, so that gives me over 2a, so 2 into 1, so that gives me 10 plus minus root of minus 10 square, that is 100, 100 minus 52 over 2. So you get here 10 plus minus root 48, root 48 I can write that as 4 into 4 into 3 over 2. So from here you get this 10 plus minus 4 root 3 over 2. If I split this, I get that as 5 plus minus 2. So now if I find this, I want it to become less than 0. So I understand n should be having all the integers value which are not even equal to so we'll draw an open bracket because we want it just less than 0, not equal to 0. So n should belong to all the values that is between 5 minus 2 root 3 and 5 plus 2 root 3. Then only you will have this value of the entire function less than 0. So n should belong to, let's find out, 
5 minus 2 times root 3, we know it is something 1.73. And this is also 5 plus 2 times 1.7. So from there, you get 5 minus 3.46. Let's say equivalent to 3.5. And this gives you 5 plus 3.46, so 3.5 again. So n belongs to any value between 1.5 and 8.5. So once I get this, I know n belongs to any integer values that is between 1.5 and 8.5. So n can have for the second part all the values from 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So n can have the 7 values for the second part. Now let's combine both of the ideas. First idea told me n can belong to all the integer values except 5. And the second tells me n can belong to all the values from 2 to 8. But if I combine both of these ideas, I know that n belongs to all the values from 2 to 8, but it cannot have the value 5 from the first expression. So if I combine both of these ideas, I can have the values of n everything from 2 to 8 but i cannot have it as 5 because the first part tells me n cannot have the value of integer as 5 so i get how many elements in this set n that is 6 so that becomes the answer for the question so i get the answer for the question here as option b i hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions so first of all i just divided by removing the mod here so i got two parts once I solve for two parts, I got the values of n that satisfy the two parts. And once I combine those two parts, I got six elements in the set which will satisfy the conditions which are given to us for n. So your answer becomes option B. So B becomes the correct answer. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. And we are going to continue our series of questions on 11th, 12th, as well as JWE mains. So stay tuned for more videos to roll out. Also, if you are enjoying these videos that we are doing every day, please do like the videos as well and do subscribe to my channel. Share these videos with your friends also who are involved in the preparation of these questions. So they can also take the benefit from these questions which we are solving on everyday basis. See you again tomorrow. Thank you.